Hi, I'm uh, Marcel Ruben and uh, welcome to this uh, full tutorial. Today I'm going to uh, start to make a copy of uh, Vermeer's Mildmate. And I'm going to try this in, uh, in my own technique that I'm usual with, which is based on uh, two or uh, three layers. Now my goal is to uh, study from his composition, colors, and to try to get a feeling of his uh, lightning as he, uh, he was a master of light. And you can download a very high resolution picture on the website of the Rijksmuseum. Now, this picture has a very good realistic uh, color on it. Now let's uh, start by taking a closer look at Vermeer's, uh, Vermeer's way of painting. Now Vermeer has as far as I could read it, basically used four or more layers, starting with a dead underlayer or a, a dead coloring, which is focused only on getting the values right. Now, the second layer uh, is working the, uh, the colors and, uh, and building this, uh, this up. And the third process was uh, a kind of a glazing technique. Uh, like touching the final details uh, with, uh, with, with transparency colors or other kinds of colors. And here you can see his famous uh, uh, kind of a dot technique. I, was, I always was uh, very, uh, very intrigued by this. Now, back in the 17th century, I was reading that uh, Vermeer was, uh, was using only the best uh, pigments uh, available uh, in that time. So that says something about him. Uh, he was uh, quite a perfectionist. Now I'm uh, going to use my palettes, which is our uh, strong opaque colors for the first layer and more transparent for the uh, for the second and possible third layers. Definitely a possible third layer in this painting. I don't really know what to expect by uh, painting Vermeer as I. Uh, I never tried to copy one uh, of his paintings, so this for sure should be uh, a very good uh, learning experience. As well, I don't know how my uh, technique is uh, going to behave with uh, painting uh, the milkmaid uh, of Vermeer. Now I'm uh, going to mix my colors in the, in the way that I always do. So please uh, see my previous movies uh, to see how I do uh, how I do that. As you can see, I uh, use the grid to compose composition on a panel that is in the exact dimensions as the original uh, Milkmaid painting, which is 45 and a half by 41 centimeters. The original painting is, uh, is made on canvas and I will be doing this on my trustful panel. But again, the goal is uh, not to make an exact copy, but to learn from, uh, from Vermeer. Uh, as Vermeer, as he was, to my opinion, uh, one of the best masters uh, in the 17th century. Now I'm uh, starting with the, uh, with the face, uh, with the uh, darker colors first, and uh, work my uh, way uh, up to the, to the lighter parts. Also, this movie is uh, not totally uh, a time lapse. Um, I will stop the time lapse in certain points to uh, give more explanation on uh, what I'm doing at that uh, particular time.
Now I'm starting with the background and uh, specifically with the milkmaid, this background uh, wall is one of the most important definition to, uh, to my opinion of, uh, of the light balance, of the value balance. Uh, again, it has to, uh, the colors have to be uh, family related to, uh, uh, to the first and second layer. But this aspect, um, again, the wall, the, the lightning is a, is a very important uh, part of this painting. Now we all know the basket next to the left side of uh, the milkmaid and we can see that uh, that basket had a lot of details in it. Now obviously we're not going uh, to paint those details in, uh, in the first layer. What we will do though is to make preparations uh, for those details. Uh, and we will do that by uh, giving the basket a kind of a background uh, that will um, uh, facilitate us to do this uh, second layer and the details in those second layer more easily.
Now the uh, first layer is finished, and I must say that this uh, the first uh, layer took me already quite uh, quite an amount of time. Now the first layer again is to help you to prepare for the second, which should make the process of the second layer more easily. Now let's analyze the painting in its current state and we will see that the face is way too big but I'll um, I will correct that during the uh, painting of the lady's head as for the background the background is uh, off color and it's also of value but it is still family related so that should be close enough now the fun will uh, will now start on the second layer so i will uh, try to use Vermeer's style a bit more so his uh, style uh, like like glazing and color it uh, this will be uh, a bit more involved and as for the uh, the table you can also see that those colors are uh, not matching up as well as the uh, the bottle on the table i'm not really sure what it's called but uh, yeah it's it's a uh, it's off and it's uh, not in balance. But that is uh, what the first layer is for. Give it some time, analyze it, and uh, preparations for uh, correction. doesn't uh, happen uh, very often but uh, I'm now in the process of changing um, the, the face of uh, the milkmaid to uh, to be a bit smaller because her face was uh, the form was a bit a uh, bit too wide now you want to uh, basically avoid uh, making forms corrections in in phase two Forms correction should be uh, mostly done in, uh, in uh, the first layer, or none at all, because the sketch should be uh, should be also uh, uh, good enough to uh, to don't have to make uh, uh, form corrections. Be that as it may, sometimes it happens, and uh, then basically you can uh, still make a small, very small cor uh, form corrections in the, in the second layer.
Now I'm going to paint that uh, red uh, details on her skirt. And you'll see that uh, I'm now doing small dots on those skirts. Now, the trick is you have to be very, very delicate. Uh, as I put the small red uh, dots on there. Next, uh, half a millimeter or so uh, next to that red dot, I'm uh, lighting it up with uh, very delicate white, titanium white. And this will give the illusion of uh, depth within the smallest details. So I'm now going to uh, bring some cast shadows between the uh, blue uh, cloth and her red cloth. Now this will uh, create the illusion that uh, the blue cloth is uh, uh, kind of hovering above the, uh, the red one. So that's uh, a very delicate uh, procedure as well, uh, but not too difficult. Uh, uh, the nice thing about this is uh, the, the, the bigger you make the cast shadow, uh, the more the illusion it will bring that the blue cloth will be uh, separated from the, uh, from the red cloth. So I'm doing this uh, cast shadow in a wet in wet technique so uh, I can uh, make this soft transitions. As Vermeer also was an uh, amazing uh, artist in the wet and wet uh, smooth transitional uh, technique. But in this case I'm not really sure if he would use uh, a glazing technique or, uh, or what I'm doing now uh, a wet in wet to make this uh, smooth mixing. Wet in wet as well as uh, glazing are just uh, both of them are tools and techniques that you can uh, you can use right now I'm uh, doing the wet and wet and as you can see in this process I'm um, making the cash shadow a bit bigger uh, because I want to create a bit more the illusion that the uh, 
blue close blue cloth is a bit more farther away from the red one or hovering uh, next to it uh, in, in a wider range uh, this will uh, enhance the illusion of death Now I'm uh, glazing the uh, the left side uh, of the wall behind the window, and this example I uh, put off the time lapse because this is giving a real nice example of the power of glazing. Now you can see that the the, the right color uh, from the first layer is actually. Uh, giving some benefits for the second as the first layer will shine through what's the purpose of a glazing um, it will uh, create this more kind of a realistic and a full look like a real wall in, in all of its uh, specific details it's, uh, and obviously uh, this will make uh, a choice of glazing more appropriate than uh, overpainting or a, a wet in wet technique. I mean, obviously, within uh, this specific case of uh, the left wall behind the window. going to paint uh, the nail in the wall and this nail uh, is a very important detail uh, that makes this wall uh, kind of realistic it's actually a small detail but this small detail is uh, having a great value and the most important uh, of this detail is the shadow from that nail that is going to reflect on the wall. 
So I'm going to use uh, my magnifying glass here. So I'm now going to uh, gently, uh, with simply ivory black, just uh, put on some uh, dots on the Vermeer style, like a dotting technique, and uh, the dot will give the uh, the illusion of the holes within the basket. And the phase one that we prepared for phase two should uh, do the work for us. So we just concentrate on the small dots. And besides the uh, ivory black, I uh, before I did already some uh, simply some stripes to illustrate the uh, the threads of the basket as next to the next to those holes. So now I'm going to uh, paint a golden-like object behind the basket. And I must say, I'm not really sure what that is. Um, it, it looks uh, golden, uh, golden color shaped. Anyway, this, uh, this face from this object is all about lighting up the, uh, the colors. So on phase one, I uh, uh, made it a bit darker. Uh, so the lighting up will have more effect in the second layer. And as usual, I always start, or basically mostly 90% uh, start with the uh, darker values. And after the darker values are in, uh, I directly see when I light things up uh, the effect uh, of the uh, three-dimensional depth uh, it has. So uh, a good advice here, always... Uh, start with the darker values.
So I'm going to uh, paint the pot at the bottom. Uh, and there is something special about this uh, pot. I always uh, always uh, found it very intriguing to see. Uh, it's, it's not there yet, but if you are looking on the original Vermeer, you see in the middle somewhere uh, on the pot where the, where the light is catching uh, on that uh, small surface. You see a, a, a kind of a bluish kind of uh, color. Uh, that's the opposite of brown. But that's a very intriguing kind of a light because it really brings, uh, brings the pot together. So now I'm going to uh, give a glaze on those tiles. Uh, we've been analyzing in phase one already that those uh, colors were off or too dark. And it was actually, uh, because it was uh, too dark, it was uh, creating an off balance between the wall and the floor. Um, so after a bit of analyzing, I've uh, uh, made the correct colors or at least uh, uh, during this uh, glazing, I think I have the right colors. And you can see uh, during this glaze, um, depending on how much oil you put in the, uh, in the paint, the, uh, the below color is a bit shining through. And that's exactly what we want. Uh, it will make this style a bit more fuller or a bit more alive. Now, after this uh, glaze is again dry, uh, after that, we're going to uh, put those figures on uh, on the tile. So this is actually uh, an example of uh, uh, a layer of three times.
So this is uh, the end result. And I must honestly say uh, it is a pretty difficult thing to, uh, to find the balance uh, in the whole painting. But I am not Vermeer himself. Um, and for me, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy with the, uh, with the result. And just for reference, here you can see uh, the original. Now, researchers found out that Vermeer used what is called a camera obscura, which is this kind of a camera that uh, projects the image on the other side. Well, the research is being carried out to this day by the experts on uh, how Vermeer did his work. Be that as it may, no matter the results on the research, I personally find Vermeer a true master of light and uh, composition. A master of fine detail, and a perfectionist in composition, and an ability to move emotion on the canvas. You can, uh, you can clearly see that when you visit the Rijks Museum. And that being uh, said, I hope you like this tutorial and I see you on the next one.